Good morning, everyone. According to our faith, so shall it be. What comes into us depends upon the exertion to reach out. So I trust you've brought a prayerful heart today. And that heart is centered on the one purpose, the main purpose of life, to do our prophet's will and learning who God is and how to become like him. I desire Heavenly Father's Spirit to give us an increase today. Page 91, let each man learn to know himself. I ask that Heavenly Father will give us a special blessing this morning to apply the teachings, the scriptures that we're reading to our time where we can comprehend what we are about. I'm so grateful for our prophet, and for all the prophets before. Each one has shown their generation it is possible to become like God. The only man the Lord calls to be the key holder, the prophet, are those who are perfectly obedient. That is why we can look to them as an example. I'm impressed with the day in which we are living and the prophecies concerning our time. Your Book of Mormon study last night gave a lesson that we can take. And how I yearn your minds will be opened and you reaching out. So be awake this morning through a prayer burning in your heart and mind. The Nephites had a great prophet among them. I emphasize that because the Lord allowed many even outward signs to be given through this prophet until all the Nephite people everyone said we know he is a prophet and that God has blessed us yet within a very short time the time of Nephi the son of Helaman nearly all the people of the Nephites forgot the Lord again do you see what the things of this world do to people's minds? All the evil one has to do to get power over us is to cause us to forget. And that's why every day we must remember him and remember his prophet the right way. When we say, I remember you, it must include a want to. I want to be like you. I want to do your will. Not just, oh, I remember you. And that want to is the submission that leads to perfect obedience. So include this in your faith. With all my heart, Heavenly Father, I want to be like you and do your prophet's will. The Nephites forgot the Lord. They didn't want to anymore. Their hearts were upon the things of this life, and thus they became carnally minded. Faith is a gift of the Spirit, a working of your spirit. Faith is to be spiritually minded, looking to Him who is invisible, as though you could see Him and talk with Him. Because the Nephites would not listen to the prophet among them anymore, though great miracles had been performed through him, the Lord sent another prophet. He visited Samuel the Lamanite and commanded him to go upon the walls of the city. He first went in the city and the people rejected him. The Lord said, Go back. He stood upon the walls and spoke the words the Lord commanded. And this in Nephi, the son of Helaman's time, 
This was the time the Nephites found out very publicly the prophecies of their own destruction. Even a short time before this, the prophet Alma said to Helaman, Don't let the people know these things. But Nephi proclaimed it, and now another prophet, Samuel the Lamanite, by the mouth of two or three witnesses shall the people be judged. And thus a second prophet proclaimed these things publicly. And he told the very time the Savior would be born. Within five years, he said, there will be signs and wonders come. There will be a day and a night and a day for there will be no darkness. And this will be the witness to you that God himself has been born into, onto this earth as a little child. And when the night time comes again, you will behold a new star in the heavens. Not only that, but another sign shall be given, he told the Nephites. When our Savior is crucified, great destruction will come upon this land, and only the faithful will survive. He said, not only that, but four hundred years or so after the coming of Christ, all the Nephites will be wiped off this land. And in that day, you will wish you could repent, but it will be too late. You have turned against God, and the devil has you as his. There were many other prophecies given concerning them at that time. Some few believed, and these believers went to Nephi. It says, Nephi was still prophesying, teaching, baptizing, these believers went to their prophet. But most of the people would not believe Samuel. They cast stones, shot arrows, up on the wall trying to kill him, and the best marksmen couldn't hit him. When many people saw this, then they believed, and more believers went to Nephi and were baptized. But most of the people would not believe. Now as an unbelievers talk, they say, well, the prophets might have guessed some things, but they must have talked by the power of the devil. And if there's great things happen, they must have some supernatural power of the devil. <coughs> But in the 90th year of the reign of the judges, the Lord started sending forth these signs. This was two years before Jesus was born. And as these signs were sent forth, these unbelievers said, Oh, maybe these prophets so-called guessed right so far, but how could such marvelous things happen? How, how could there be a day and a night and a day with no darkness? How could mountains be lifted up and dropped on cities? How could such a great people as we are ever be destroyed? That is the talk and thinking of unbelievers. And I say to you young people, Part of your prayer today, in this time of your life, must be, Heavenly Father, I do believe your prophets. Bless me with a stronger testimony and faith. You must express that belief, wanting the truth. So the devil got hold of their hearts, whispered these doubting temptations, well, how do we know? 
and thus the people were hardened all the more. This great prophet Nephi, the son of Helaman, right the year before Jesus was born, he left the city Zarahemla. He had given the place to his son named Nephi, and this Nephi, son of Helaman, departed out of the land, and no one knows where he went. So here is another prophet that it appears was translated, where the Lord took him up, like unto Alma and other prophets. Now a new prophet was there to lead the people. As the first year came, the people of the Nephites, the wicked people, remembered Samuel's words. <coughs> that five years from the time he spoke, right around five years, the great sign of day and a night and a day would be given with no darkness. But the unbelievers had control of the government. They passed a law. Anybody who believes in that sign, if it doesn't happen by a certain day, we will have them killed. You might marvel at this, but I remind you what the lawmakers in our day have done. Passed laws to destroy this people when they came in 1953 to carry us away. So it's not so hard to believe. The prophet Nephi went to the Lord. He cried unto the Lord all day for deliverance for the people. And finally, after praying all day, the Lord himself talked to Nephi and said, Tomorrow I will be born into the flesh, and you will see the sign tonight. That very next day was the day the believers would be put to death. And so the people watched, and the sun went down, and there was no darkness. It was as bright all night as it was during noontime, during the daytime. And they watched the next morning how the sun came up, came into the sky again. So shocked were the unbelievers, they fell to the earth in fear. Now they knew all the other prophecies would be fulfilled. Nothing like this had ever happened. Now they believed. Until most of the people again were converted. Most of the people were rebaptized and followed the prophet. But even by the end of this first chapter in 3 Nephi, we read within five years of that sign, the people's hearts were hardened again. And thus we see the nature of faith, young people. Faith does not come by signs. The stick to your faith. Faith comes by choosing to believe the words of the prophets, acting on that belief in obedience, so that Heavenly Father's Spirit can be with you. If ever you're in a condition where you just wonder and doubts start coming upon you, that means something is missing. There is something that always testifies of Heavenly Father where you just know He lives, even though you haven't seen Him, where you just know these words of the prophets are true, even if they haven't happened yet. That special witness is the Holy Spirit of God. And if the Holy Spirit, that special witness, is not burning in you, most probably, 
you've forgotten Heavenly Father. Your want to is geared toward the world instead of I want to be like you Heavenly Father. Return to Him. Pray hard. Tell Him you want to do His will. You believe Him and want to be like Him. And you just watch what happens inside. That assurance, that surety where you just know these things are true will be in you. But faith requires the expression first of believing. Not all these thoughts of, oh, how do we know? So I say to you young people this morning, I do believe. And that belief has led me to seek the gift and I have received it, not of myself, but I thank Heavenly Father for a living faith that these prophecies will be fulfilled. And I want my faith to grow so much that I will exert that faith to help accomplish those things, the prophecies of our time. <coughs> Not only was this sign of the day and the night and the day given the people, but many other signs. And as the signs came, this is how the people started to treat it. They started to see, well, oh, we've seen something greater than that. And they started to ignore the signs the Lord would send. Do we have signs and wonders in our day? Of course we do. Anytime there's an earthquake, a terrible storm, a volcano, wars, judgments, these are signs of the coming of the Son of God. For the prophets of old saw them in vision. The record is in our hands. We can read what was written hundreds of years ago that is happening today. But the people of our generation have become like the ancient Nephites. Sign seekers won't believe until they see something bigger and worse. We read this story and say, well, why didn't they believe? It was marvelous to their thinking. Can there be such a thing as a day and a night and a day with no darkness? Then you think about the prophecies of our time. What we are called upon to believe. We're told all the islands or the continents will become one land. The parts of the earth will return. The ten tribes who are on another planet, their planet will mold into this one soon. And this earth will be much larger than it now is. So great will be the earthquakes. That many millions and billions of people will die. We're told of a desolating sickness where they have no cure. We have signs already of this happening. Diseases have come forth where there's no cure. There's earthquakes more often than ever before. More volcanoes. The historians say they've never heard of such terrible storms as we're now getting in certain parts of the earth. The great famine prophesied of has been happening parts of the earth for many years. The signs are before us. And the people of our generation have done just what the Nephites did. Oh, we've seen that before. They might have guessed some things right, but it's just a working of nature. How do they know? But in our day and time, it's not just another prophet. The prophecies concerning our day were given by God Himself, our Lord and Savior. 
He spoke to the apostles in old Jerusalem, told them what would happen in our time. He visited the Nephites. God himself spoke the words, what will happen in our time, as recorded in this book of 3rd Nephi. And that same God will make sure his word is kept. The prophecies have been fulfilled thus far. The rest of them will be. How is it? Have we become hardened with the generation in which we live? Are we no longer shocked if there's a murder here in this valley and robbery and crime? How about the nakedness? Are you just used to it? as you drive down the street or go in the store I don't want to get used to it I want to be amazed and ashamed that there's murders and lyings and robbings right here in this city but the news reporters only report something that's worse do you know there's shootings every day here in this valley some of the very roads you drive on, people get killed by murder. Some of the houses you drive past, they're being robbed. The crime is so great, they can't even report it all. And nobody is safe. And we just get used to it and say, well, that's just life. These things were prophesied of. It didn't used to be this way. In Brigham Young's day, a person could walk down the street, be safe at night. Today it is not so. Are we waiting for something worse, bigger to happen before we believe and get busy to loving God and loving one another. And this is the lesson I yearn that you'll absorb in this training. This is a warning for us to not be like the Nephites were. For we have signs and wonders all about us. One great sign that God lives is the preservation of this priesthood people where the whole nation fought against this priesthood and tried to destroy it for the last hundred years. But the Lord has preserved this people, and we are here. Every day is a miracle that we exist. We don't need more signs to prove that God lives and our prophet is leading us right. What we need to do is believe Express that belief. Seek for faith, that certainty within that leads you to a perfect obedience. Those of us that wait for greater signs, we will see them, but it will be too late for our preparation. Today is the day of living by faith obeying and obtaining that living faith, that witness, that strength within, so that we can go on unto perfection. As I read this record, I look at myself. What am I waiting for? I want to believe now and do something about it while there's yet time of peace. By the end of the fifth year of the time after the Savior was born, nearly all the people were wicked again. Even among the righteous Lamanites, their children would not believe. So the Lamanites decreased in their righteousness because of the rising generation of unbelievers. 
So what happens next? Another destruction. To humble the people, to wake them up. So read this next part carefully. We're told, as it was in Third Nephi, so it shall be in our time. Read this book carefully now. We will see a pattern, many similarities of our time. There is one difference, though. The people in our time will all be wiped off this land, except those who are like God. And we must be prepared to come into His presence. The people won't have many, many years to prepare. This is our time of preparation. With all the threatenings of judgments, I remind you, that happiness is what attracts us toward greater faithfulness, not just a fear of judgments. Just doing right feels right. So be encouraged. Do all the good you can. You will be strengthened to do more good. Wonderful things await you young people who will be faithful and prayerful. So press forward. Draw close to your parents and our good prophet. Let's have a wonderful day today. I'd like all students who are not part of the Ruland Jeff's household to stop using the basketball standard over by the new house. We don't go over there and play games. I know our prophet is loving and kind and offers what he has to the people. We ask that this brick wall along the driveway be the border between his private affairs and this school effort. And teachers, just be careful on the compromise. Let us do it out of respect of our prophet's privacy. I ask that any teachers who want to take students off the property always ask me. Don't just do it. I'll try to have my phone with me so you can do so. We're in the springtime. The first day of spring is past now. I know the spring fever hits. That is one of your tests. We have a job to do and I expect you to stick with it. I want you to respond to your teachers. The weather looks wonderful out there. The teachers will let you out at the proper times, but let's get the job done. One more thought before I let you go. I ask all you people, you household of faith, to include Uncle Fred in your prayers in connection with our prophet. Our prophet has told us Uncle Fred's life will be extended. When the prophet says something, that is what we concentrate our faith on to help accomplish it. Uncle Fred is a perfect priesthood man. He is one with our prophet. If you want to pray for our prophet, include Uncle Fred also, who is a strong, faithful man serving President Jeffs. I've noticed this week some of our prayers have not included him. I ask the Lord to renew Uncle Fred and lengthen his life and strengthen him. A great event took place about three or four weeks ago. Our prophet promised he would be healed. And Uncle Fred was healed almost immediately. 
the Lord removed the blood clots in his brain. So we see a special connection between these two men. Two special men carrying forth the work of God. But when the prophet speaks that something will happen, be sure to concentrate your faith on that thing. Ask the Lord to renew our prophet's body and also Uncle Fred's. I do this just out of general principles that our faith should center on what our prophet says. Let's have a good day today. You're excused.